Well, can you clap your hands again for the Lord? Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Pastor Franklin, for having us. The case of black America. The case for black America is the case of all America. The church must be the agent of change in our communities if we're going to succeed. Let me first say the case for the state of the black America is not unique. One of the biggest elephants in the room is our indifference on equality and racism. The latest Pew Research reports indicates that four out of 10 blacks are doubtful that the U.S. will ever achieve racial equality. The survey also finds profound differences between black and whites on their views of racial discrimination, barriers to black progress, and prospects for change. Psalms 103 says, the Lord execute righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent us to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, and they announce the time to come. I guess that's why the Holy Ghost is not in our churches, because the Holy Ghost has been set to set the captives free. What is the missing fundamentals? The economic and infrastructure of America's urban communities have been polarized. Our, our priorities are oblique. Black America is in crisis. Racial disparities in areas of economics, health, education, social justice, we need to address this. Our for, our, on the forefront is the economic crisis. The incomes for African Americans have improved significantly since civil rights era, but we're still lower than the national average, 20,000 years $20,000 less than the national medium income. We need to rid ourselves of systemic poverty. On the health front, is related to the state of black America. America is experiencing a crisis in health care. Obesity, cancer, and chronic illnesses cause fatal diseases to come upon us. The crisis like most others have a greater effect on our black community. We have less access to appropriate health care, which includes preventive care for children and adults. So we are not only more susceptible to disease and illness, we're more likely to die from them. As it relates to education, the systemic, economic, and racial isolation looms as a huge obstacle for efforts to make quality education available to all students. Researchers have found that single most powerful indicator of racial gaps in educational treatment is the extent to which students attend schools surrounded by other low-income students. Racial ethnicity, social economic disparities, and academic achievement remains a stubborn element of US schooling. Lastly, social justice, the mass incarceration of our young men. The United States has the highest incarceration rate in the world, 1.6 million. 1.6 million are living in American prisons. Of this number, a disproportionate amount are African Americans who are so prevalent in this prison population that on any day a male with no degree is more likely to be in jail than working. Many legal scholars refer to this high incarceration rate among African Americans as scholars as a new form of Jim Crow segregation in which minorities head from high school to prison in a continuous pipeline. I was in the prisons not long ago and they said, welcome to the multi-billion dollar industry. Prison is big money. And we've closed our eyes to those who have been incarcerated in any color. Untangling the well of obstacles and ensnaring black families and undermining social equality requires efforts on three points, reducing structural barriers to ec black economic progress, enhancing incentives for working in mainstream economies, and improving our family dynamics. If you send a broken child to school, a broken child will return. If you ask a broken community to raise a child, a broken child will be conceived out of a broken unholy alliance. If you ask a broken culture 
to solve the problem. A stronger broken community and culture will be produced. If you ask a broken church to heal a broken community, you will perpetuate generational brokenness and a spiritual decline. Reconciliation assumes equality, that all people are equal. For people who look different, live different lives to become friends, we first must be reconciled. I'm going to say it again. We first must be reconciled. For me to be reconciled to you, I have to feel and see dignity in you. Not accept you because the Bible tells me to or because it's comfortable. The church, the ecclesia, the called out ones can no longer operate in silos. We have to work in a concerted, holistic, and comprehensive effort to deal with the issues of black America. Lastly, we are the church that we should be the church, the place that redefines, restores, re-energizes, and revives the consciousness of our community. We are the ones to legislate and to govern the atmosphere in the earth. It is not up to government. It is not up to social plans. It is not up to policy. It's up to the believers. If my people who are called by my name, hey, would humble themselves and pray, and turn from their wicked ways, then, then he will hear from heaven, not your little social program, not your little cute sermon, not your little prayer meeting for you, you're for and no more, but then he will hear from heaven and he's going to heal our land. If you believe that, clap your hands.